Zapalos. What? And my wife started bawling up. My wife started crying. Next thing you know, during this conversation, she sends me a text. I'll show you this text message right now. She sends me this text message. Because I seen her getting emotional. I sent her a text, babe, to make sure she's okay. She sends me this text message. It makes me want to freaking just run through it. Do anything for my wife. Many of you feel the same way about your spouse. My wife is overwhelmed with joy because right now we've got some big plans in the future. And this just ex helped accelerate those plans. Never short stopping. Now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor. Hey, you! Yep, you! The one that's watching this video right now, appreciate you tuning in. Let me your question. Have you missed out on your greatest opportunity of your financial life and you didn't even realize it? What am I talking about? Did you miss out on a real estate deal? Did you miss out on crypto? Did you miss out on a, a trade, a stock, a bond that you missed out on? Did you miss out on an IPO that now is worth millions and billions of dollars? No, I'm not even talking about that. Not even close. So what do I mean by all this? You see, the answer might actually shock some of you. And for some of you, it might even set some of you that you'll comment below, Matt, how could you say something like that? How could you even presume I'm upset about that? Well, give me 10 minutes and you'll see what I mean. So what in the world am I talking about? Well, I'll answer your question with a question. What separates those that become greats and those that just go through the motions on a daily basis. Whether it's an income milestone you haven't hit or a business that you've been meaning to launch and start but just haven't gotten around to yet. Whatever your definition is, you haven't hit it yet. And it could come down to a multitude of reasons. For example, you might lack discipline. You don't make phone calls every day. You sleep in later than you should. You eat unhealthy. You don't work out. You don't exercise. You pretend to work out at the office every day. But we all know you're not really working out because your results, the leader's bulletin, speaks for itself. So whatever it is, if you're brave enough, comment in the comment section below what you are struggling with. I dare you. Well, here's the truth. Those things never change. Things that you want will never change until you go through and take advantage of one opportunity that every single first generation cash flow millionaire I've ever met has taken advantage of this one thing. And I'll be honest, it's not an easy thing to hear. What is it? It's called crisis, crisis. What do you feel when you're going through a crisis? You see, you feel pain, you feel heartbreak, you feel failure. Only when somebody experiences real pain will someone really implement real change. Let me share with you a quick story of a crisis that I harnessed and used to fuel, fuel me and my wife and my family towards victory. I went through a business reversal. Somebody promised me a lot of things and I didn't manage expectations up front and for many years, I thought things were just fine until one day the rug was pulled out from under us. Financial reversal, emotional reversal. My wife was crying on the couch for entire week. I still believe though that the pillows that my wife is crying on still has water on them till today from her tears. But make a long story short, we use that instead of saying, you know what, let's attack and let's, let's get back at them. Let's file a lawsuit. Let's do this, let's do that. And we say, you know what? Let's just rechannel that energy. Let bygones be bygones. Let's extend grace. Let's extend forgiveness as difficult as it was that, hey, you owe me, you owe me. We said, you know what? Remove money from the situation. What would you do differently? And we decided to follow that decision. And we decided to progress. We started to control what we can control. We embraced that crisis. That one day, that one day people saying, yep, told you so. I told you so that we decided to take the higher road to the circumstance. We decided to take the high road and say, you know what? You doubt me? You stab me in the back? I said, you know what? Just watch me work. And make a long story short, one conversation led to another conversation, led to another conversation, and boom, I come across my now mentor, Patrick B. David, and he coached me, guided us, led us, presented us questions, and make a long story short, in the last, I don't know, six years, little little over 6.5, 6.8 million dollars of positive cash flow, direct deposits, revenue, net expenses in our bank account. You see, we chose not to get bitter, we chose to get better through that crisis. Out of nowhere, myself, my fellow business partners, fellow shareholders of the company that we're building, was called into a meeting by our CEO founder, Patrick Ben Davis. Hey, guess what guys? I got great news. He says what? You that have stock equity and you exercise your options, you have shares of our company, you have equity position in our company. Guess what? Good news. What? 
We are paying today dividends. What? Yes, dividends. Now, being raised in Chicago, uh, family immigrated here from the Philippines, this is not language that's normal to us. We actually, we actually had to learn this type of language. We had to learn the rich man's language because the language I was raised with is broke man's language. So to make a long story short, he announces, yes, because you have stock in a cupboard, boom, you got this check. So-and-so, you got $2,000, you got $4,000, you got $8,000 check. Whoa, what? Stock equity ownership. Wow, these guys are making money from dividends. Not because they sold a policy, not because they're overriding an agency, not because they sold a business. No, these are dividend checks because they have ownership. They have stock equity ownership position in our company. <laughs> you know, you get slayed onto the, uh, the rest of the guys. And I didn't realize from the field force that we're, we're building, I didn't realize from the field force uh, uh, my wife and I have the third largest shares vested and exercised with inside our company across the country, coast to coast. As the pilots. What? <laughs> That's a hundred twenty three thousand dollar income check. That's a hundred twenty three thousand dollar dividend check that will be direct deposited into your bank account here in the next couple of days. What? Guys, you got to understand this. And I was a sergeant in the Marine Corps. <laughs> Spare making $20,000 a year serving our country after serving eight years in the Marines. I was a single dad at the time. Just had my son. He was two, three years old. I left the military. I left the service. Got started involved in the insurance business. Started selling life insurance and annuities. Started doing dinner seminars and buying leads. That was a big waste of time until I really found out how to market myself. And then I was fighting through the three jobs just to get my full-time insurance business started. I worked at Jiffy Loop, worked at YMCA, worked as a servant at Olive Garden, just to make ends meet as I was beginning my insurance career. And now fast forward, and some of you might think, <laughs> you're just so lucky. You're just lucky. Yeah, really? We were there during that crisis when my wife was crying on the couch. We had a financial reversal. We didn't know what our next move was. The only thing I knew how to do is make phone calls and control what I can control, make some connections, look for some connections. No, you weren't there. And I'm not there during your crisis. And the thing is, you're there during your crisis. And the question you got to ask yourself is, is this going to pay you dividends by how you handle this crisis? By how you handle this situation? What will you do? Anyway, back to the story with Patrick. Sapala's $123,000 check. Now, many of you may not know my wife from YouTube videos because my wife just doesn't like doing social media. My wife just doesn't like getting on camera. She is the millennial between the two of us, and she doesn't like social media. She doesn't like doing pictures and videos. My wife's very logical. Uh, she's a spreadsheet type of person. She got a degree in finance at the University of Pittsburgh after earning a four-year Fulbright scholarship to the University of Pittsburgh. She was a she's a Cali girl uh, that was raised in Sacramento. But anyway, make a long story short, my wife is not one of those emotional moms. She's not one of those emotional wives. And uh, when Patrick mentioned that. I can see my wife flash back to the crisis with that we've all been through. She, that our family's been through, that our children has been through. The feeling of uneasiness, the discomfort, the pain, the anxiety, that how could you do this to me type feeling. And my wife started bawling up. My wife started crying. Now, the entire company have never seen my wife get emotional. I've barely seen my wife get emotional. Matter of fact, one or two times she's cried with overwhelming joy for a situation. This is one of them. And next you know, during this conversation, she sends me a text. I'll show you this text message right now. She sends me this text message because I seen her getting emotional. I, I sent her a text, babe, to make sure she's okay. And then she sends me this message. I can't tell you how great it feels for a husband to know that his wife is watching, his wife is appreciating what he's doing. She sends me this text message. This makes me want to freaking just run through a wall. I'll do anything for my wife. And many of you feel the same way about your spouse. But she sends me this text message about how we handle that crisis, our character of handling that crisis, and how it paid off just a few years later. And we've been talking about stock equity ownership for a while. Stock equity ownership for a while. Stock equity ownership. It's 2017, we got stock. 18, we got stock. 19, we got stock. But never really got vested or exercised a stock until lately. And next thing you know. My wife is overwhelmed with joy because right now we got some big plans in the future and this just ex helped accelerate those plans. And I did a video uh, a couple of videos ago about you not quitting because your breakthrough moment is right there. There's so many people right before they're right there at the breakthrough moment, 
They quit. They stop. I don't know why. They get distracted. Somebody else has negative affirmations that outplay the positive affirmation that they themselves should be having. And they buy into the negative affirmation, they're distracted, and they miss out on that situation, on that crisis, paying them dividends. So let it happen to everybody else, just not you. Because you see, that's what a crisis can do for you. Chances are, since you're human, you've been through a few. Just don't let it go to waste. Because embracing a crisis, and many of them beforehand, has allowed me to build that financial and emotional strength muscle to allow me to become a first-generation cash flow millionaire and many others. Now that you're fired up and potentially need some sense of direction, please subscribe to the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel below. Click this subscribe button and join the Seven Figure Squad community. And I hope you've made a decision that no matter what happens to you, you will fight through and follow through and come through. Now, if you want some specific strategies, check out this video here, how, how real millionaires create passive income. Check this video out right here. And if you're thinking that you want to create and pass on generational wealth, check out this video and how millionaires create and pass on generational wealth. So that being said, if you're watching this on Facebook, please click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. And again, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications. Be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. Here from the Money Smart Rolls Royce, I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.